What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see today we're going to be in a Seto Corsa and we are at the 1966 Monza layout. We are on the full circuit that has the bank and the road course, so definitely going to be an interesting race. I actually recorded this already one time and actually did pretty decent for the first time on this track and these style cars. Speaking of, we are in the Lotus 49 today. I'm going to leave links about historic Monza and this car down below if you guys want to read more about it. I don't want to go too crazy in depth in that today because there's a lot of history about both of them to cover. I have this race set up for five laps, so it should run about 15 minutes, so it's a decent length video. I don't want to take too long, especially with how my Elgato has been wanting to act up or my computer, whichever might be the issue here. So I can actually try to get through this and get this recorded. Um, I did want to mention, if you guys have not tried this, you definitely need to. This is one of the most difficult courses to get these style of cars around, other than maybe like Norge Life I've tried. The banks are just so aggressive and really throw your car around and you're literally flat out at like 180 miles an hour through them. It, it's just insane. Literally every corner on this track just about is insanely difficult to get through in these cars. Now here at the beginning, I'm going to avoid pushing the car much. I want to give the tires a chance to start to get a little heat in them because this car does tend to walk around the track on its own and do some really funny things. And as you can see, we already have somebody off in the grass on our left hand side there because he's trying to push that first corner too hard. It's really easy to understeer off right there. Same goes right here. If you just overdo it, pushing the car into it, it's really easy to just understeer off on that wall or trying to correct from that issue, oversteer too much and then spin and go into the inner barrier. Just really, really difficult track to kind of push a car like this to its fullest around. You really got to commit to your line and what the car is doing and just hope for the best basically. Like right here, this corner is so crazy to take flat out. Definitely doable, not my cleanest run through there. That was really sketchy. That was really, really sketchy. I thought for sure I was going down that time. I like to give the AI a little room in this corner too because they get a little skittish around it. It's really easy just to plow into the back of them. I've gotten tagged on the inside too with one of them trying to push their way through and spun out in that corner as well. As you can see though, this track just had absolutely insanely high speeds no matter what section of it you were on. It, and now you can see the wheels starting to kind of bounce around in my hands while I'm trying to fight the bumps and keep the car in a, well not a straight line, but at a controlled turn around the banks. Exit's not your best friend either, it's very uneven coming out of there. The second bank's even worse on the exit. I always have a little trouble committing to full throttle going into the entry of the first bank. Second bank doesn't bother me. It's the exit on this one that always sketches me out. It's very, very uneven. It just kind of drops off onto the straightaway. So far we're not doing too bad, managed the whole ocean at least. Oh, stay away from that curb. You do not want to put this car up on that curb. It'll really make it do some strange things that are just about impossible to recover from. Luckily that time I managed to not upset the car too much doing it. tires breaking traction a little bit there definitely hit the line around coming through that corner it's honestly really tricky oh sail the grass to hit any line perfectly in these cars just because they do float around so much on the track your steering input is fairly precise but there's suspension just feels so soft and there's so much tire sidewall the car really can walk around on you
And then once you do start understeering in this car a little bit, one of the things that really freaks me out when I'm driving it, you'll understeer a little bit and then you'll try to get on throttle a little bit just to get it to rotate around. And then all of a sudden the front will grab traction again sometimes and just spin you around the opposite direction pretty darn fast. It's one of the reasons I've been kind of timid about pushing this thing into a lot of the corners. I've had it happen many times to me so far driving this car. It's just very unsettling feeling when it does it. After having to record this race again, and now probably being on about 11, 12 laps total, I've drove here so far, my forearms are starting to get a nice little burn on them from trying to grip the wheel hard enough to hold it around these banks. I've actually tried to do this circuit before with 100% force feedback, and even on the Thrustmaster, it's still an overwhelming amount of torque pulling you left and right when you're going over those bumps. It's doable, but you would not want to have to do it for more than a couple laps. I really do not like getting anywhere near those curves. You can see looking at them, they're more like a regular street curve than they are any kind of racetrack curve. Just looking at them, they're very, very steep. Don't have much roll up to them. You kind of just hop over them when you hit them. such a strange feeling car to drive and race. You can feel the weight of the car just kind of rolling back and forth on you as you're going over bumps. A lot of those little twitches you're seeing in the wheel are the car slightly veering back and forth. It's not really me, it's the road kind of just taking me where it wants to go. I don't know what it is about that corner, if it's the camber of it or what exactly, or if I'm just taking too much speed or the wrong line every time, but this car gets really understeery back in that corner every single time. You can really see just looking at this track's layout and the fact it's sitting right in the middle of a park, why it was so dangerous and why they shut down the high speed oval part of it. It's just, it's too dangerous, especially by today's racing standards. Just literally, just about every race they ever had here that involved F1 cars, there was a crash and people died. The, one of the very last races that was ever actually ran on the high-speed circuit, they had three driver's deaths, and I don't even remember how many spectators were killed, but that was one of the last races, or the last race, that was actually ran on the high-speed oval section of the track. The track's been rebuilt many times, and the really early version, the original version, I should say, of this track from the 20s and 30s was even crazier than this. The banks were much less safe than they are in this version. They had a lot less of a roll into the bank. It was a lot more abrupt. So it really unsettled cars from everything I've been able to find out about it. it. Everything about it was really just treacherous. In fact, they didn't even have concrete reinforcement under the banks. It was built on the hillsides. It's really, really mind-blowing to think that this was the safe layout for Monza back in the day. Oh, turn in. Really, really sketchy going straight into that corner, just basically flat out, and then hoping the car's gonna grip up, because it doesn't always do it in these cars. Oh, 
Well, that's great. I was actually doing pretty decent most of this race. The rear end got a little skittish on me and then kind of just had no control of the car and the AI just happened to tag me right as I was already lost traction. The car doesn't feel too bad though, luckily. Should be able to finish out the race with relatively no issues. That Ferrari is absolutely insane coming up the inside like that on these banks. I mean, could you just imagine what would happen if you lost control and went at the outer rail with these banks? You're not going to get stopped. You're literally going to go flying off in the stratosphere like a rocket. Really, anywhere you make a mistake out here at Historic Monza, it's just death. And that's all that's going to happen. There's no surviving pretty much any tracks. There's no runoff areas anywhere. And if you watch any of the people that have actually walked the track's footage around these areas where the banks are, if you go off on the inside, it's even worse because it's nothing but trees dead on. This Ferrari is definitely having me in top speed. I just cannot keep up with them after a certain point. Oh, not that curve again. Oh! I did my best to stay off of him, but I could not slow down any faster than that without just fully locking up the brakes. I'm not sure why the Ferraris are so slow in that corner right there, but every time I've gotten behind them, they really, really bog me down or cause an accident every single time. The car is really walking itself across the road now. Actually, it wasn't bad through that corner that time. I'm starting to finally really get the layout down a little bit. Oh, a little too much speed, but I managed to get it slowed down enough to keep it on the track. Oh, I was looking at the stats and was not seeing me going straight at those hay bales. Now the steering in the car is real jacked up. Oh yeah, the car is definitely not happy with me after that. The steering wheel is slightly off to the right now. Suspension feels real, real bad across these bumps. Really tossing the wheel around a lot more than it was before. Oh my god. Oh god. You can see right there what I mean. The car is just kind of wandering itself back and forth after that. And with that abrupt jump back to the pits, guys, that'll be the end of our race here. I actually managed to make it through in one piece for the most part. Not a whole lot of damage compared to what I was really expecting to happen this race. This is a lot of fun, guys. I really, really suggest you guys give this a shot if you've never taken this car out at Historic Mons and tried to make it through a race. It's very, very difficult to do. It's just an insanely hard car to control in the first place. And when you couple that in with the fact that this track is as old as it is, as bumpy as it is, and it just has such nasty corners, it really, really makes it a challenge. If you guys did enjoy today's video, don't forget to hit that like button down below, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.